Well, grace and peace, everyone. We want to welcome you to the uh, Believe in God's Word broadcast. Uh, we are encouraging people to make God and His Word the final authority. Amen. So we just, uh, we've been talking about the goodness of God, but we want to get right into our confessions, believe in God's word. So say, say this with me. Say, I believe God's word. God's word works, and it is working mightily in me and through me. Hallelujah. And say this with me. Say, God's word, the incorruptible, the indestructible, the infallible, the irresistible, the ever-living seed, word of God. Amen. And we always, we always remind people that the word of God is the creative power when it's conceived in the heart, spoken out of the mouth, through the lips. It is creative power. It has the ability. Now, I'm going to go to, I used to go to Isaiah 51, but I'm going to go to Isaiah 57, where he says, I create the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace to him that is far off and to him that is near, said the Lord, I will heal him. So there's healing in the word when it's spoken. Remember, Isaiah 51, 17 said, oh, it says that, um, that um, well, actually 51, 16, where he talks about um, that he has put his words in our mouths. So the word of God works when it's in your mouth and in your heart. Your heart, uh, you believe with your heart and then you speak it out of your mouth. And he says, I put my words in thy mouth. I have covered thee in the, with the shadow of my hand. We talk about protection. And we talk about the hand deals with provision. So he says, and I, that I may plant the heaven. So God says, I'm going to work with your mouth. I'm going to get it in your mouth. And you're going to say, and I'm going to back it up. <laughs> so he says, uh, that I may plant the heavens. That's how we plant the heavens in the earth. That I may plant the heavens and lay the foundation of the earth. And I say unto Zion, thou art my people. And I know sometimes I get into these things because I'm always seeing different things in the word. And I like to share those things. Just, you know, not because I need to say them. I need to get them in the atmosphere. When you, the word of God will control an atmosphere. We were just sitting here talking about the authority, which we're going to be dealing with down the line in, in these broadcasts, because we have to talk about the authority of God through Christ Jesus. Now, but the word of God must be spoken, and we, he wants us to plant the heavens. Why? Because God's plan, he wants his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. So that's why it's important for us to speak the word. And that's why we ought to read the word, um, study the word, and believe, you know, we as believers, we shouldn't, you know, you don't have to struggle with as a believer because you are believing the word because you're a believer. You have to say, I'm a believer. You're born of the word. I share these little things with people because, because the scripture says we're not born of corruptible seed, incorruptible seed by the word. So when we go to the word, whether we're talking about like our subjects, the goodness of God, the goodness of God. See that we're going to go to the word and see what what his words say about his goodness. And where is his goodness <laughs> and how to operate in that goodness, how to experience the goodness of God. But first, you got to know that he is good. Amen. So let's look over at. Um, Psalm 107, we were, we was over, we said uh, quite a few things. Um, Psalm 107, um, <clears throat> 107, actually, uh, 107, hmm, let me find it. I want to get to the, now, <clears throat> we talked about, and we are talking about the goodness of God. The goodness of God. 
we said expect God's goodness every day. You must expect the goodness of God every day. Expectation, faith cannot work apart from expectation. See, because faith gives substance to what is expected or hoped for. And the Bible hope is about favorable expectation that derives from God's word. So, so we want to expect God's goodness every day. And we talked about how the scripture says that the in um Matthew, I mean um Psalms 23, 6 says, goodness and mercy shall follow us or accompany us all the days of our life. So every day of your life, God wants us to be good wants us to experience his goodness. And then we're going to talk about um, the year. In um, Psalm 65, 11, these scriptures I've talked about before, but they need to be, we need to be reminded that he will crown our year. He will crown the year with goodness. So, and we have to know that God's original plan for this earth, when he created it, was to bring to display his goodness when when you see scripture like uh psalm 107 one give thanks unto the lord for he is good that's the adjective of him he is good he's not bad he's good <laughs> and for his mercy endure forever and mercy and here's another thing mercy and kindness and favor and blessing all those words we know they are they come out of God's nature he is he's a good God and David saw that when he says for he is good give thanks unto the Lord and you know I was thinking about I was reading a comment from brother Jonathan and he was he was talking about what how Israel was overthrown, and I thank you for that comment, John. How they were overthrown in the wilderness because they started complaining about God instead of just thanking Him for His goodness. They took their eyes off of all that God had did for them, and where He was taking them. God has prepared good things for us, and what He had prepared for them. And they they got stuck with the with the things that was militating against them. And I think it was in First Corinthians ten twelve. And then and um and then I like the fact that faith, we need to trust and have faith in our heavenly father who provides for us and he's not gonna let us down. Because he is good. You know, when I when I think about the the fatherhood of God, the Bible says, how much more shall the Father give good things? Our Father give good things to his children who desires it. Can you say amen? So we but we so we can't keep we can't take our eyes off of the goodness of God. And I know sometimes we just see God from an old testament view. And if you visit my website, you'll you'll see that on um, that website, you know, you'll see there's particular subjects that I talk about, like renewing our mind, renewing, getting our minds renewed, because we're looking at, sometimes we're looking at God through the eyes of the Old Testament. We're in a new covenant where the love of God has, and the goodness of God has totally been displayed um, when Jesus walked the earth. You know, and I and I I can I can I can um, you know I I would see Jesus as a manifestation of the God's goodness in the earth because God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing everyone that was pressed of the devil because God was with him. So I really appreciate the feedback, um, and when he shared, you know, with Brother Jonathan sharing, you know that. You have God, little children, we have overcome them, and great is he that's in us, and he that's in the world. Look, I tell people we have nothing to worry about. 
Let's just keep looking unto the goodness of God and we can see the goodness of God through Jesus. Amen. Can do Jesus. He was the goodness of God in action. God anointed him with the Holy Ghost with power. He went about doing what? Good and healing all them that were oppressed of the devil. So, and now we're his body. And we wanted to talk a little bit about that. But let me just finish reading this. It says, let the redeemer of the Lord say so. Who's the redeemer of the Lord? You and I, we're redeemed. We are redeemed. Who have redeemed from the, the hand of the enemy. We are no longer in the hand of the enemy. The Bible says he delivered us out of the power or from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Now, when you're talking about the kingdom of his dear son, you're talking about the, the goodness of God too. The goodness of God. The, we said the word goodness is mercy, favor. Um, it is benevolent. It is gladness. It's, it's everything. Remember, everything that God is. Is in his kingdom, and you and I, been, we are birthed into that kingdom. Now, and the king's domain. So he says, let, and then no matter what they went through, and I wish, I wish, I wish you would just read Psalm 107, the whole thing. The Bible says they went from one place to another. They got slack, and they took their eyes off the Lord. They complained. They went through, went through a whole lot of emotional pressure, um, started trusting in other things and found themselves in bad in a bad place. And then then the scripture says, um, because they rebelled, the eleven verse rebelled against the words of God and contemned the counsel contempt contempt the counsel of the most high. That word just simply means when they did not value God's counsel he, of the most high Therefore he brought them down, he brought down their hearts with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. But then they were smart enough to cry unto the Lord. And when they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, he saved them. Why? Because he's good. Even when we're even when we're going through a real I guess a rebellious, a disappointed stage, or a depression stage or a, a perplexed stage, or we're going through whatever stage that we're going through, and we find ourselves gravitating to other things and moving away from him who is our help. He said, all you have to do is cry unto me. Just call unto me. He said, they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses, and he brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and broke their bands asunder. Why would he do that? The next verse. Oh, that men will praise the Lord for his goodness. Hallelujah. And for his wonderful works to the children of men. Man, that is powerful. He, and you just see on and on in this 107. How I, Have you ever been there? God gets you out of one thing. And well, I'm good. And then six years, six months, six years, six weeks, some people six minutes. But I, I ain't getting nobody better. You find yourself st straying into something else. Something else happens. And then you say, man, let me cry unto the Lord. And you cry unto him. And guess what he does? He delivers you. Why? Because the Lord is good. His mercy endureth forever. He says, I'm going to keep showing you. I'll never give up on you. You know why? Because all oh, that men will praise me for my goodness, not my badness. There is no bad in them. For my goodness. <laughs> he says, praise me for my goodness, for he is and his wonderful works to the children of men. So we, I want you to expect no matter what's going on in your life, no matter what's happening, God said, if you would just turn to me, when you turn to him, guess what you do? I just heard this in my spirit. When you turn to him, you turn on his goodness. <laughs> oh, that men will praise me. He says, for I'm good, for my goodness, 
and my marvelous works to the children of men. So God has a miracle. God has a, 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 a level or a expression of goodness with your name on it. <laughs> it's waiting for you to turn to him. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, whew, I got off into that. Well, let's go to Psalms. One, uh, one, um, one, um, Psalms twenty-seven, thirteen says, "I have fainted, lest I hope to, I believe or hope to see the goodness of God in the land of the living." And I said before, the Lord wants us to expect His goodness every day because the expectation, as I said, is the first in place for all the manifestations. Expect them. Wake up every day and say, Father God, I just thank you for you are good. In the name of Jesus, you are good. And you express that goodness to me through your son, Jesus. So I thank you for being so good to me. And I expect your goodness to manifest and your mercy to manifest in my life every day. Every day I am in expectancy for your goodness. His goodness is his benevolent self. Jesus was the full goodness of God in action. And it didn't stop there, people, because God says, I want to show you not only that I'm good, but I want you to know that the day you receive Jesus Christ, God's goodness went inside of us. Every one of us carry the goodness of God. Now, I remember growing up in, in service, and I would hear messages like, well, there ain't nobody. We'll reach the scripture where the guy comes to Jesus and say, good master, good master. And Jesus says, why you call it thou me good? There's no one's good. There's no one good but God. Now, and, and I never understood that. Nobody ever explained it. But now I understand what he meant. Jesus did not come in his eternal goodness when he came in there. He came as a man. Though he never sinned, but he was a man. He came in the goodness of God. It was God in Christ reconciling the world back to himself. He didn't come in his eternal goodness. The Bible says he humbled himself. You got to read Philippians 2. Five, and he said he humbled himself. He emptied himself. In translation, says he emptied himself of all his Godhead privileges and became a man. Humbled himself, found himself in the fashion of a man, and became obedient to death and even the death of the cross. So he did not come in his goodness when he was with the Father from the beginning when he said, Let us make man. He came as a man. The Bible says in Romans 8. Three, that uh, with the law being the law being weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, because of sin, because of sin, Jesus condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. So yes, there was nothing good in man. The Bible said there was nothing good. No, not one. No one was good. And Jesus came in the goodness of the Father to give us a, 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 a better view of the Father. He was bringing things back into the earth. We'll look at that in the next session. He, when he said, let us, when the Bible says everything he made, he said, light be, and it was good. He saw that it was good. And when he made the trees, he said it was good. When he made the animals, he said it was good. God, only good could come from him. And then we know when, the, when Adam disobeyed him, then that's when the bad came in. <laughs> the Bible says sin came in by one man's disobedience. Romans 5. You got to read that 12th verse. And read it all the way down to the 21st verse. But it's important to understand that God is good. And what he did in Christ, he can be good to us. In every way. Amen. And he wants us to know that he's good. The Bible said so. Um, 
I don't know where to go now. <laughs> and God, so, so he said, I would have fainted lest I believe to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. So, David knew we all will faint, give up. If we don't believe, he's one. So he tells us here, we he we should be believing and seeing the goodness of God in the land of the living. Not just when we leave this earth, but right here in the land where we're living. God said, I want to reveal my attribute of goodness in your life. Well, I'm out of time. Glory to God. I'm out of time. <laughs> But anyway, I hope you enjoyed that little bit that we shared. Um, and expect every day the goodness of God to be manifested in your life. And we're going to pick it up next week. So in the meantime, we just want to uh, we just want to remind you to share, to like, and to share and subscribe in this broadcast. And we've We've been, uh, what we say, uh, been just believing God to op for this operation, get the word out. The Lord gave the word and great was the company. 16, 68, 11 in Psalms. The Lord gave the word and great was the company of them that published it. So publishing here means help to spread the good news. So we, we are encouraging to subscribe, as I said, to share, to like, to families and friends and help us get the word out because we are that great company. Amen. Well, we uh, appreciate this time together. We're going to see you in our next broadcast. And remember, let's keep reminding ourselves, I believe God's word, God, and, and I believe I believe God, I trust God and his word, and I have made God and his word in my life the final authority.